continue with the talk about the discourse. I would like to mention something. Regarding the question that was asked the last session about happiness or suffering, from what I describe, it seems that life is terrible suffering. <coughs> well, sometimes I forget I'm t talking to lay people. But, I mean, there's some truth in, in that. Sometimes it's not the mystic of commission, it's the mystic of omission. You get what I mean? How do you translate that? Commission and omission. <laughs> Commissione. Commissione. <laughs> That means when you say something is this, if you don't mention what it is not, sometimes people misunderstand, no? Uh, when I say life is suffering, I don't say life, I didn't mention life is happiness. Then people think life, everything is suffering. Huh? When I say life is happiness, I didn't say life is suffering, people think everything life is happiness. And that's what I mean. When I say life is suffering, I may tend to omit the fact of happiness. When I, I commit to, to this life is happiness, I may omit the, the suffering. You get me? Uh, that, that is something. That can be a problem because now I remember the case where a yogi met with a Vipassana teacher. It's the first time she had with that Vipassana teacher who is supposed to be quite well known. And I asked her, how do you like your retreat? And she looked at me and said, he's the saddest man in the world. If you twist this woman in the mundo, I said, wow, <laughs> that's a strong statement. Because this teacher emphasized so much about that you must, in Vipassana, you must see suffering. Yeah? And that is often the case in more serious practitioners. Yeah? But it may have this kind of adverse effect. There was also another case when I was in Europe. No, not in Europe, I was in Australia. And there was this young couple in that Vipassana Center uh, that had some of the pictures there, no? Then he told me, look, this is a pictures of our marriage. We were very happy before we knew Vipassana. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he said it like a joke, but I mean, there is also something to eat because he said it, you know. So, there is often this misunderstanding when you have this the sin of commission and the sin of omission. <laughs> so, it needs to be a bit more balanced. Now, if I describe, let's say, if anybody who understood Vipassana would be Mahasi himself. He's the one that promoted all this and he's the grand master. If I look back at that time, when I was there and I see Mahasi around, I think he's simply very happy. <laughs> he couldn't be bothered about, he's supposed to be head of the whole, he's, he's the institution no, of the whole thing. and. When you're alone by himself, you see him walking around really carefree. And he's, he's just chanting his Burmese. Hey, da, 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 de, da, 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 de, da. And then he will walk. Do, 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 do. You know? <laughs> and all the yogis around him will be walking mindfully, mindfully. Oh, right step, left step. See, very really serious. Ah, so, <laughs> so, so you see, there's a. 
That's the difference there. <coughs> and then sometimes he would crack a joke, you know. And all the monks and all those yogis there would be still very serious, you know. And he would start laughing, ha 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 and everybody would still be very serious. <laughs> wow, this is interesting. <coughs> So, I think there has to be some kind of there probably there, there there has been some kind of misunderstanding with with this thing about suffering and happiness. Not that we shouldn't be serious; we should be serious. But being unhappy is just another thing, you know. Uh, watching suffering is one thing, but when you watch suffering, it doesn't mean we have to suffer, you know. We're supposed to. Suffer, watch suffering because we understand suffering. So do you get out of suffering? So the more happy you are through the vipassana practice, that means the more you understand the nature of suffering. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, maybe there's one or two things words I want to say about this. Huh? I wouldn't like to give you too much pep talk about <laughs> what is happiness and suffering. You are all big grown-ups. <laughs> but I, I just want to say it. I can't help it. <laughs> See, first is that we understand there's happiness and suffering in the world. Okay, but what's wrong with enjoying itself, having a... Uh, Go wild, but having a fling <laughs> in the <laughs> in the Christmas or Christmas party, have a booze and then get a hangover, something like that. So, <clears throat> and when you come here to meditate, yeah, you have to meditate. You have to wash pain. You have to walk and sit, walk and sit. Wake up so late in the morning, and then uh, so early in the morning, and then ah, uh, uh, see. Who is mad? Are they mad or are we mad? No. <laughs> so first we understand that happiness is a state of mind. It's a mental state. To understand what is you're having real happiness, you have to watch your mental state. Yeah. Now this comes back to the very basics of our practice. You know, vipassana. What's the basis of vipassana? Basis of what be personal is reality, understanding of reality, yeah? being aware of what reality is, you know? and because of that, at least you must have mindfulness. Uh, this is the very basic. When you have all those sensual pleasures, yes, you have happiness. You know, the Buddha also stated that there is happiness. There are different types of happiness. The sensual pleasures, for example, you know? uh, and so on. But you know, uh, we are talking about. Uh, what the more real kind of happiness, which is more lasting and which is based on reality. You know, if, like the story of the Zen master, uh, the Zen master with a few monks were there, and then outside there was a mad fellow. Ha ha ha, he ha ha, he 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 ha. Then they, they told the monks, you see, that mad man seems to be so happier. He seems to be happier than us. <laughs> Who are mad? Is he mad? Are we mad? You know, <laughs> but you look at the state of mind. You no, know, the mind is terrible state. It's a mess. Uh, you think of the longer term. Uh, when he dies in this deluded, he's probably going to a very woeful state. And, and, you know. So you come back to the state of mind, which is mindfulness, and based on reality. Uh, that you're looking at something more longer and basic. And in this sense, the human life is a blessing because the human life has more opportunity to practice mindfulness. You know, when I say, according to the Abhidhamma, you know, I don't think animals can get enlightened. Oh, those animal rights people say, I protest, I protest, how can you say that? No. <laughs> well, I haven't heard a monkey get enlightened before. Even during the Buddha's time, <laughs> it 
to, to animals that serve the Buddha and were probably better than many human beings. But you know, the po- talking of the potential of enlightenment and the greater goodness and blessings in existence, the human mind, the basic bhavanga citta, is the potential for greater development. Uh, it is no lesser than the deva realms. No, deva, they have good karma, they are born in deva realms. The human mind has, in terms of potential for enlightenment, is not any less than the deva realms. And the opportunity for the human realm to develop inside the realization is better than the deva realms. You know, because of the you can see more suffering. <laughs> you can see more suffering in the human realm. There was realms more difficult to see suffering. Because every day is a party, you know. Uh, everybody, the, the, the men are 18 years old, the ladies are all 16 years old. Uh, and every day there's a party. Everybody is so pretty and so handsome, and they go pom chak chak, pom chak chak, pom chak chak for thousands of years. And then when they die, they say, oh dear, I haven't done any merits, so down you go. <laughs> <laughs> it is a simplistic way of putting it. But generally, that's what we get an idea from the text. <clears throat> yeah, some suttas talking about Happiness, for example. Uh, one of them talk about happiness, the basics of good happiness. One is in terms of confidence. Uh, confidence that means you know, happiness, that's what you call the fool's paradise. And the confidence that comes because you know where you stand, you know what you are doing and what you have to do, and you're doing what you can. That itself gives you a kind of what you call mental stability, strength in dealing with life. Don't you think so? Uh, a person, let's say, he may be sick, but he's doing, he knows he's doing what we can. he can. Or he may be losing his business, but he's doing what he can, and he knows his situation very well, and he will know how to face it. And because of that confidence, his mental stability is better. Uh, which means that this adds another important mental factor here. There is the acceptance. And acceptance comes with reality. Yeah? And this come, can be so only when you are really mindful of reality and the situation. No. Everything is impermanent. We're going to die anyway, right? See, Antonio? Alfino, he goes to Suchedera. Morte. Is it la morte or il morte? La morte. La morte, ah. La vita, la morte. So, but, no. When time comes to die, there's a different story. <laughs> I heard, I don't know whether it's true or not. Oh, sentito. Questa donna, Elizabeth, what? The one who studied about death. She studied about, she wrote a lot about the death, the five points of acceptance. Ah, what? Ah, I said, this is good Lord. I heard when she died, she was totally in panic. <laughs> she was totally upset, you know. And she's a great authority to start on the really research on death and psychology. I mean, I hope it is not true, but obviously the person who told me has some backing behind him. So that's why when you say of theory and practice, <laughs> <laughs> and said, Tiro, yes, we have, uh, even the preacher who was preaching about anatta, etc., in Malaysia. When he started to be personal and he, he saw anatta, he panicked. <laughs> the preacher, you know, he quote all this, you know, when he comes to anatta, oh, experience anatta, he started panicking. 
There's no me. What am I going to do? Then he went to went home and saw his newly wed wife. Oh goodness, she's Anata. I'm married to Anata. She started panicking, you know. <laughs> and so he gave up his practice for a while. He couldn't take it. This uh, this is theory. <laughs> Theoria e prata pratica. No lo stesso. <laughs> so when it comes to death. Ah, even more serious. It's getting more serious when you go to that. <laughs> no. mm. So, recommendation, concilio. Yeah? In your room, you put a picture like I do, a skull. Teschio, skeletro. And then every day you offer flowers. Death, death, death. Uh. So you have a positive, peaceful veneration of the nature of life, the ultimate nature of life. Yeah? And you feel very peaceful and happy every time you think of death. Uh, there's no guarantee, but <laughs> 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 I think it would be better than the Elizabeth Kubler Rose. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the best is, of course, Vipassana. So. And of course, this is called the, the joy factor. You know, this, is, this joy factor in life is very important. Sometimes in Vipassana, sometimes you forget about the joy factor of life because some people stay in the dukkha jnanas. <laughs> Knowledge of suffering, the dukkha jnanas, for a longer period of time. Then if they don't have enough mindfulness, they don't have enough instructions, they get themselves depressed without knowing. No? And so the joy factor is very important in, in this sense. <coughs> and of course, the final Im- most important thing is Vipassana is to be able to live in the present. No? Is there past? There's no past. Is there future? There's no future. What's the present? The present is here and now. What me worry? You know, the story of what me worry. You know, you haven't heard of the word? What me worry. Is, have you heard of the Mad Magazine? Many years ago, one of our favorite magazines was the Mad Magazine. The funny looking boy who is quite mad. You know, it's crazy. So, he always says that what me worry. <laughs> mad was another word. <laughs> But here, you know, it is not in this sense. It is, one is in reality and accepts things as they come and as they go. It doesn't mean they don't, don't do anything about the future. It doesn't mean that they don't do anything about the past. You recognize the past, present, future are all part of the conditioning thing. And he accepts it as it is. And he's, because of that, he's totally detached from everything. And he is at peace with whatever comes and goes. And the, because it's detached, being in the present moment means you understand what is anicca dukkha anatta, which he does not attach to the past, present, or future. It's totally detached from that. In the mind, it doesn't, doesn't mean he doesn't see it, he sees it. <laughs> and because of this, it's not affected by his, his mind, is totally free and happy, whatever situation is. And that is vipassana. Like, I remember again the incident where the Upsado Pandita asked a question to a crowd of people, yogis. What is the highest blessing? Yeah. And people were giving all sorts of things. And they never thought of this sutta, Mangala Sutta. Have you heard of Mangala Sutta? Uh, discourse on blessings. It is one of the suttas that children learn by heart when they're young in Buddhist countries uh, especially Sri Lanka Sri Lanka Asivana Jabala Nang Pandita Nang Jasevana Puja Ja Puja Niya Nang Eta Mangala Muttamang Padirupa Desa Vaso Ja Puve Jagata Punya Tata Sama Paniti Ja Eta Mangala Muttamang 
da 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 uh, 38 blessings uh, starting from the very first association with the wise this association with the fools honor those who are honorable it's the first step of blessings in other words happiness and the last one uh, last one is Itta disani katawana sapata parajita sapata so tingga chanti tante sang mangala mutamanti. Going in all directions, wherever one is, uh, one's mind is undisturbed and peaceful. This is the highest blessing. So you see, it goes up. This is after the realization. No? Somewhere before that, there's the realization of the noble truth. After that, no? so <coughs> this is the answer to your. If you have any doubts about happiness in human life, okay. Now we come back to this. Yes, we are in number three. What is that one thing, number four, what is that one thing to be abandoned? Uh, when you say one thing, it narrows down to asmi mana, egocentrism. Well, it usually is translated as ego conceit. Uh, ego is asmi, it's I, I, I am. Yo, yo, so no, so no, gua. <laughs> and mana is conceit. If you think of two, then it is ignorance and craving for existence. This more becomes more metaphysical in the consciousness at the more base level. Uh, ego conceit is more apparent uh, and that means what is very obvious I mean it is interest. I find it interesting in the way it is being presented you know, one, two, three, four, five one it simplifies things two it expands a bit clearer in a, so uh, now ego this has always been a, with a, some kind of uh, some kind of uh, find a very very funny situation in this because when I study Abhidhamma, I look at this it says that that says that, that says that, 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 that you know uh, yes, of course I don't believe everything it says you no know? <laughs> of course I do respect to all those Abhidhamma acharyas but. It's not what they say, it's how we per relate to it, and especially after all those English translations. <laughs> or Italian translation, if you're Italian. Then, because this ask me mana, this mana, this very close connection between mana and wrong views. No. Wrong views is ditty. Mana is conceit. <coughs> so these two are very close. <coughs> so finally, I ended up with a conclusion. Ask me, mana is egocentrism. Yeah? I this wrong views is a fixed idea of a world view. No, the, the English have this word world view. You understand? The, their view of the world, the idea of what the world is, not just the world outside, but also the world inside you. Yeah? What what is the existence of world view? Wrong view that means it is not accordance with reality. Yeah? But 
view here has a special dif dif di di significance because as a mental state, it refers to a state which strong craving and clinging. For that, the comment of Sula Una, what? Opinion and falso. Uh, strong attachment to a wrong idea. Uh, because it's important, because it guides your whole what you think of life and what you do in life. No? Isn't it? Correct, my friend? So, what you do in life depends on what you think of yourself, correct? But since there's no self, what, like, what do you expect to do? Nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. Huh? I'm just cracking, I'm playing, playing with words. So, so there's this wrong view. There's egocentrism, that means you take the person, uh, the I, the I concept. The I is a concept. The I concept as the central p point of all your mental activities, of thinking. No? The central focal, focal point of the mental the I concept. But what is the I? Uh, then it refers to so many possibility things. And when you attach to that very strongly, and then it can become a wrong view. Yeah. So you have quite this, and the identification process is more involved with egocentrism or wrong view. Involved with both. Yeah. Both. Yeah. <laughs> So, there is this Asmi Mana. And this Asmi Mana, interesting because, in, because the English word is one thing, the actual Buddhist metaphysics psychology is another one. You see, what happens is, in the Buddhist metaphysics, only the Arahata is freed from Asmi Mana. Yeah. And... But the stream inner is enough to overcome wrong views, mitchadity. Yeah. Ah. This strikes a question in me. Now, if there is no mitchadity, then how come the Asmimana is there? How can we think of I when you know that? The right view of Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta is basically no I. So, so there's this, uh, I always think about this, something missing there. <coughs> so I concluded that it is something to do with the mental processes involved. Because there is a sutta, for example, about a monk called Kema. You know? he, he, of course, is a great practitioner and so on, Kemaka. And then he has these disciples. Then the disciple says, Kemaka is like that, like that, like that, like that. Uh, so he must be an arahant. Uh, but Kemaka, when he heard that, he says, No, I'm not an arahant. Uh, he says, Although I have good understanding to practice the nature of the five aggregates as non self, I still have not, I'm not an arahant yet. That means it is not so complete. He says that he gives a exa nice example. He says, that suppose the a tower uh, has been used in a toilet, and so he has some bad smell there, you know. Uh, and so you take and wash it and wash it until it's very clean. But then there's still some bad smell there, <laughs> uh, sticking to it. So what you do is you put there, you put some sandalwood powder and everything, nice smelling. Perfume, eau de cologne. <laughs> what perfume you have in Italy? Uh, what? <laughs> Aqua di Alba. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, when we are Alba, they always say Aqua di Alba. But then nobody goes into the shop, no? Say why nobody goes to shop? He says, well, because it actually belongs to the mafia. 
I don't know what it is, what people tell me. So, <laughs> so, so, anyway, the, 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 how this, how, what was the, the example he gave? Which means that this certain sense, which is actually, I think, it is kind of connected with the process of linking the thought process with the concept of I, yeah, and centralizing it, which is a kind of subtle defilement. Ah, it's interesting here, you look at the attainments. Now, Sotarpati and Sagadagami Marga, the first and second path, has no more wrong views. But it's still got craving. But the craving is not like the ordinary people's craving, you know, people are oh, oh, drink beer or oh, do all sorts of things. Huh? And they still got subtle craving. Especially the the ones return, the Sakatagami. Uh, let me understand that there's still some uh, you know, processes involved with this. And also there's a clinging. But the Anagami has no more sensual pleasures, has no more hatred. Uh, that means it's completely detached from all these senses and so on. But this thing is still there because there's clinging there, very subtle. Uh, to what? Not to the sense desire that this is mine, this is yours, uh, uh, but to the goes to the second part, uh, craving for existence. No, craving for existence. Craving for existence, mind you, is not wrong view. No. Craving for existence does not have to do anything with wrong view. Uh, it's just a very primitive force, <laughs> like the serpent. Martin, Kundalini. <laughs> serpent power. <laughs> I'm just joking. Because Czechs, huh? it's crazy about Kundalini. When I first <laughs> when, when, when to, in Europe, I started teaching Czech, there's this craze about Kundalini, you know? Uh, the moment they get some joy, they shake the body a bit, say, Kundalini force is working, Kundalini force is working. Eh? And people get crazy because they, they cannot control the Kundalini force when it, when it rises. So they totally disagreed with that. I said, people are meditating for so many years in Malaysia and Asia and Burma, they don't have Kundalini forces. Why the checks? There must be something. <laughs> No, because the Czech, it seems during the communist days, the only, only way out in the spirituality is yoga. Because the communists put down all religions. But yoga, okay, so they went underground. No? And finally the Kundalini came up. <laughs> is this so crazy then? Yeah, but you, even I got, got initiation in the Kundalini yoga. Oh, yeah. so do you believe in it now? No, it was interesting. It was one one Indian police. Uh. She was there, uh. and she put her hand on the on the head of the people, mm. and they, they they start jumping and shaking. Mm. And if she came to me, mm. put the hand, I notice the tendency to start to shaking as uh. each other. Uh. But then I realized that it's like I I don't need to shake, and I stay. Uh. Oh, something is wrong with you. Ah, yeah, is it? Probably not. <laughs> Psychology, is it? Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when you tell it like that, you yeah. believe in it, it becomes like that. Yeah, exactly. No? Similarly, like the Qigong, no, they said, this can make you move and so on. No? They make me move. I, I was mindful. What is this? Mindful, mindful, mindful. I don't move. The moves I move a little bit. And they say, with the, every five o'clock, the master will transfer his chi to you. If you stay there and stand like that, and you will shake with his chi. So everybody stand there and shake. I mean, you expect me to believe that? I think it's all brainwashing. <laughs> so anyway, this is my point of view. Huh? I don't argue with anybody. So anyway, so coming back to our talk, so the 
ask me mana. You know, she is clinging for existence, craving for existence, still there. But you know, this is not craving for existence in the human or deva robes, in the Brahma realms. And the Brahma realms are very subtle, they are like that. Especially Arupa Brahmas or Upika, equanimous. Hmm. Especially the higher Brahma, they don't smile. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a bit. Okay, anyway, the Arupa Brahmas don't have the body. How can they smile when they don't have a mouth? <laughs> but, but, but mentally, they can still have joy. No? But generally, they are very stable because of the nature of their Bhavanga. And so, <coughs> So this, this asmimana is a very terrible thing. It persists in the asavas, in the affluence, in the intoxicants, in the mind, from the lowest to the highest Brahma realm. And so it's there. Only in the other hand, it is totally eradicated. Yeah? So, but in terms of, we don't talk about anagamis and all those things. Yeah, no? <laughs> Even for the ordinary person, you know, it is very obvious when the craving and egocentrism become very strong, then it becomes ugly. Uh, I, I used to say, some people, their ego is as big as the universe. <laughs> really big, big, big. The Chinese have a word for it. Bao se. It means, it's so piano thinking morte. <laughs> So blot her up, confia, with pride, you know, with all the glue, so, until, you know, so huge, you know. And you have to be careful of such people, because, especially if the person has power, uh, uh, you hurt his pride, that's the end of you. Especially if the, he's the king, you know, uh, off with your head, then you have this Big strong volition, no? uh, off with your head, and the head goes off. So we have to be careful. <laughs> so, so, but it is ironical that sometimes you see that vipassana practices, no, they're supposed to be less ego. Actually, sometimes some of them are so big ego because I am a big time yogi. I'm a big time meditator, uh, so on. Uh, people ask me, why that that that, that monk, that nun, uh, supposed to be arahant, supposed to be anagami, supposed to be such a great meditator, he's got so big ego. Well, who says? <laughs> you say, I didn't say, he says. Uh, probably, obviously, not enough practice, because the person is about anatta. No self. How can that thing come? Uh, so no self. But it doesn't mean that he, 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 he doesn't do anything, no? Usually people who practice have strong willpower. <laughs> Otherwise they can't practice. But, you know, the ego and attachment and so on are two different things. But in the worldly side, it is, can be an asset. Because they're very strong people, they're very bossy, they, they can push people around and they get things done. Right? Right? You want to be president of Croatia, Tommy? You got to be a very strong personality. <laughs> but be personal is a different thing. Personal, you have to do away with the ego. Personally, do, do, you don't do away with mindfulness, you don't do away with clear comprehension, you don't do away with compassion, you don't do away with the good type of joy. <laughs> you know, and you, you still can do a lot of things without the wrong view of the, of the soul, without the ego. You can, in fact, you, you function more efficiently. Yeah. <coughs> So, but as you see, this does not just come alone. The, all the different ones are interconnected. No? The craving, anger, delusion are all interconnected. A cycle. 
There are three evil roots, like the tree of suffering. <laughs> three evil roots, craving, anger, delusion. Uh, craving, which is clinging to something that you cannot cling on to, and you should not cling to, and that you cling on to, you eventually suffer horribly. Anger, you cannot accept reality. Yeah? But you have to accept it because you don't accept it, you suffer. But it's too terrible no, the thing to accept, too horrible thing to accept. So I say, no, I cannot accept that. So, okay, <laughs> you hold on to it and you're going to suffer. <laughs> no, reality is such that it is just reality. Reality, the Nibbana is there's moral. There's immoral and there's unmoral, right? Moral is kusala, wholesome. Immoral is akusala, craving and division. And unmoral is neither kusala, akusala, abhyakata. Uh, and nibbana is abhyakata. Uh, it's neither moral nor immoral. No? So, reality is such that if you Hold on to it, cling on to it, refuse it. You don't even you don't cling or or or, or reject it. You just don't know about it. You're blind to it. <laughs> it's akusala. Yeah? But if you're mindful, uh, you can accept reality. Uh, you you can what do you call uh, surrender to reality. And you know clearly the nature of reality, and then you can, there can only be happiness. Yeah, it's like the river. You go against the current, <coughs> you're going to suffer. So you go with the flow, right? But it depends on what the flow, no? The flow of reality, not the flow of craving. There's another type of river called the river of craving. <laughs> you flow with the river of craving, then you're in trouble. So. <coughs> so this is asmai mana. So you cannot just deal with just asmai mana, but it's a good what you call signal. Uh, just like computer antivirus, beep 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 beep. Uh, aha 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 aha. Uh, so my mindfulness will come out. <laughs> <coughs> Then, when you go a bit deeper to the roots, craving, anger, delusion. No? You see, the craving, the, the, you see the paticca samapada, the will of dependent origination. There's this three evil roots in the center, craving, anger, delusion. But the main one, the exile, you know, exile, the will, you know? The thing that turns the wheel, the axle. What do you call that in Italian? Asse. Huh? Asse. Asse. Axle. Uh, that, 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 uh, uh, that is delusion, moha, and craving, tanha. Uh, and this tanha. Two types for existence and for non existence. Then this, the other evil is dosa, aversion. Aversion comes only when there is craving and, and delusion and, and, and delusion. Without delusion this anger does not arise. It must have delusion. That means when you are angry that means there is certainly delusion there. Yeah. Right? You say you're angry. When somebody is angry, he says, You're angry. No, I'm not angry. Uh, uh, they, you refuse to <laughs> accept the truth that he is angry. You know? No, I'm not angry. You know? So, what do you do? 
what did you say? What's his name? Pietro. Uh, when your girlfriend angry, what do you say? You're angry? She becomes more angry. Uh, so what do you say? No, you look lovely when you're angry. You're so sweet, ah, then she becomes happy. You're so beautiful even when you're angry. Uh, I don't have to teach you that, you should know better. <laughs> so, 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 in this case, no, when craving comes, anger does not arise. You understand? Craving and anger, they are complementary, but they cannot exist at the same time. No? So the better is, you know, watch anger as anger. You no, know, if you are mindful, uh, it's better to be mindful of anger than to replace it with craving. Because you replace it with craving, you are using another poison to overcome one poison. No, you eat poison, bitter poison, so you eat sweet poison. So you don't taste the bitter poison, <laughs> but still you die. Although you may die slower, no, but you die anyway. So, so, <clears throat> so, when you go into a deeper level, then you come ac- come across this two things to be abandoned, and uh, this more in the root. Of course, the the the, the asmi mana, the ego conceit, is also down there anyway. It comes together with the craving. Only outside is expressed as I am great, no? Uh, the Chinese say, heaven is great, earth is great, but I am greater, no? <laughs> the, the, the Chinese Taoist philosophy, heaven, man, and earth, no? The three. So, so who is greater, heaven, man, or earth? Man is greater. That's why he gets into trouble. <laughs> <coughs> well, you know, it's, it's the first step that you see. Uh, it's a good start to pick up the craving when it arises. But when you become more subtle, uh, this expression of craving as I becomes latent. Uh, uh, it's latent. It does not appear, you know. <coughs> so, so, for example, a person, uh, for example, likes to, to dance, you know. What do you know, Gorilla, you like to dance? Uh, what type of dance do you like? Tango. <laughs> uh, ballet. So, when you dance, sometimes you dance, 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 you forget yourself, you know, correct? Uh, you're so involved with joy, joy to the world, la 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 la, no? yeah. <laughs> dance has gone through various evolution. And then uh, by my time there was this type of dance, no, twist, you know. Let's twist again, as we did last summer. Oh, twist, twist, fear, twist, there until the back become ache. <laughs> I, twisted, I twisted my spine. <laughs> so, twist, and after that, they get becoming, a, I don't know why, becoming crazy. Break dance, that's more dangerous. They go tumble, on the head on the floor, ground, ground, ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, but amazing, you know, sometimes they, they, they're so involved with what they're doing, they forget themselves. So in that sense, there may not be actually any asmin mana for a while. If they think, I'm a great dancer, then of course, egocentrism comes. But sometimes when you're happily doing certain things, with, even with craving, you forget yourself. So forgetting oneself is different from understanding no self. Yeah? You may forget when you, when you sleep, you forget yourself. But it is not the understanding of non-self. There's no perception of non-self. Although, uh, ultimately, it is also non-self. <laughs> Everything is non-self. <laughs> Whether you know it or not, 
Monster was there. Right, Jenny? A very penny cherry cheese is there, no? There's no self. <laughs> so, I think it's no self. Yeah. But that doesn't help anybody if you are not mindful. You must be mindful and you then, then of course, what happens to it, then you're not affected. Yeah? Because you have insight into non self. So the idea is the insight, not the non self itself. So, in the sense that at the moment the egocentrism is not there, no? uh, and uh, but the craving can still be there, the delusion can still be there, you know. The person who is just, uh, you know, in a haze, as you go there, the person who is. The Chinese has the word Kong Kong. <laughs> Italian, I think, is the word ob, ob, oblio, is it? Uh, oblio. Uh, quite oblivious of things around us, very dull and stupid. And there's pure delusion, no? When there's this pure delusion, the craving is not there, and manifested. And <coughs> because of that, egocentrism is also not there. But delusion is there. Yeah? <coughs> so the cycle of samsara still goes on. When there's delusion, the paticca samapada, dependent on origin, still goes on. Unwholesome karma is still being created. Ah. <coughs> then, when you come to wholesome, ah, you meditate, you're mindful, you do this, you do that, you do this, mindful here, mindful there, everywhere mindful. Ah. Then, the craving of existence and delusion, is it there? Anger, is it there? It's not manifested, but it occurs as a latent tendency. Yeah? And because of the latent tendency, it's deeper underneath, and it grows. From there, it grows again. And so that's where vipassana comes in. Uh, concentration can stop it at the express, expressive level, or in the physical or mental level. Huh? But you cannot cut the base. Talia! Pietro, Talia! Talia tutto! Talia! <laughs> Pietro, Talia! <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Uh, this is a famous Malaysian word. When the, when somebody gets into problem, we always say, cut, 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 no? Ah, talia, talia, talia. <laughs> so, <coughs> that one, that, that type of cutting is cutting of the later tendencies, uh, which uh, vipassana insight. Uh, the cutting, the final deep cutting is cutting of Sammu Cheda Pahana. The cutting at a latent level, transcendental, radical incision, cut off. Ah. Ah. Then it goes off. Because the bottom there is this, these two terrible things. No. Even the anagami has cut off the root of anger, but not craving and delusion. Ah. Ah. So this. Now, of course, even though not that at the beginning when you practice, you start cutting, you know? <laughs> like a big bush, yeah? a lot of thorns. Uh, uh, how, how do you get to the root? You cannot get to the root. You have to start slowly snipping the branches. Yeah? <laughs> Outside first. Uh, there's this thorn. Talia. There's another one. Talia. There's another one. Talia. <laughs> <laughs> and finally you have the trunk and then you go to the root and you start pulling. Yeah. So things to be abandoned. Abandoned by first discipline, sila, which are the more obvious, no? Sila, morality, develop eradicates unwholesome bodily actions. 
bodily and speech. Kaya kama, wachi kama. Then this concentration eradicates at the mental level, obsessive level. That means as in thoughts. When the person is in jana, jana. Ah, no craving, anger, delusion, always. Blissful. Oh, so nice. You don't even have time to think of so nice. You just frozen. One day, two days, three days, seven days, eight days. Ah, so you frozen. The the anger, delusion, want to attack, cannot attack because you cannot you cannot provoke a stone. Can you? You stone down there. And the pro, ah, it's a pro. Get angry! You are so stupid. You so he won't move because he cannot be provoked. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> in China, you cannot. Pro- but it doesn't. It's also impermanent. So you come out and scold you. You say, ah, you get angry again. <laughs> so, so there's a deeper level. The person goes in to cut the latent level, and that's by insight. So, that's number three. Ah, you know. <laughs> number five. Kattame ikkadama. Hana bagyo, visesa bagyo. There's a two and a f- Fifth and the sixth, that leads to downfall, and that leads to distinction. No, this is this uh, is a critical point that you have to watch for. That decides, no, and uh, it's going up or going down. No? Uh. And this can we come to the manasikara. Let's talk on the yoniso and ayoniso manasikara. Yoniso Manaskara means wise attention, or proper attention, or better skilled attention. And it decides on that it goes to distinction. And the other one is unskilled, improper, unwise attention, it goes down. Uh, that's Ayoniso Manaskara. Uh, this is a quite a decisive factor on the development of the practice. Okay, we stop here today.